how does a Roth IRA conversion work? I heard it's better to convert my pre-tax IRA money when my mutual fund share value is lower. Um, this is another thing that we model. There's a lot here. One of the things is the longer that you have for that IRA, IRA money to grow tax-free from the conversion, typically the better off it is. So what that means is for it tends to model better for younger people, or if you're, and younger is a relative term, but let's say that you're still maybe even in your early 60s and we're, you're going to not touch that Roth IRA until you're your 80s or 90s, the longer it has to grow tax free, the better. The other thing is when you do this conversion, basically you're doing a withdrawal, a taxable withdrawal from the IRA. And what that means is you have to pay taxes on that. You must have another bucket of money outside of the IRA to pay those taxes. If you're thinking that you're gonna go ahead and just take another subsequent withdrawal from the same IRA, and pay taxes on that too, you're really drawing down the value of the IRA too much. When we run the numbers and model it, it starts to look unfavorable. Most people don't want to have to pay the taxes prematurely on the Roth IRA conversion. Another factor is, will you be in a higher or lower tax bracket in the years going forward? It's very easy to project that you may be in a higher tax bracket just because of the huge deficit that we have, that taxes, can, you can argue, they're historically low. On the other hand, individually, it may be that because your income might be less once you retire, you will not be in a higher tax bracket. Um, in terms of the um, mutual fund values being lower, we used to have something um, called a recharacterization, and people would do um, a, a Roth conversion and then in one year, let's say last year, when the market is high, pay taxes on the, the realization of what they converted, then the market goes down and they think, gee, I should not have done this. It would have been beneficial to have waited um, to do it when the market is down. And so then you could have recharacterized. I never had anybody do that, but that is an option. And um, now that option has gone away. It's been legislated away. So yeah. The answer is possibly that, yes, well, the market is down, um, but it depends on all those other factors more. Um, and so I would look at it very individually. I would run the numbers. And another thing is you can do it um, a little bit each year, which is a much better thing to do, I think, rather than um, get, getting yourself possibly into a higher tax bracket. There's a strategy called filling the bucket. And what that means is we don't want you to take out so much of your IRA that you have to pay taxes on as you convert it to a Roth, that it puts you into a higher tax bracket. So we only go up to the, the next um, level and we'll work with accountants on that to um, see what they think is a safe amount to go ahead and withdraw and then to pay taxes on. One thing on the Roth IRA, it is incredibly beneficial I really like Roth IRAs or Roth 401ks if you're still working and if you've got a Roth 401k option, again, particularly for younger people. The way that works is if you don't get an upfront tax benefit, it is not pre-tax dollars. So it's, you know, it's really coming right out of your, your paycheck or your pocket. But then all of that money grows tax deferred forever. And then when you take it out, it is completely tax free. It is your money. None of it is Uncle Sam's money, like with the traditional IRA or a traditional 401k. Also, there is no required minimum distribution when you turn age 72. So you can still leave that to grow completely tax-free. Another benefit that people don't think about on those Roth IRAs is that when you do those withdrawals, let's say you want, you're going to take out 5% just to live mm -hmm. on, uh, you, it does not count as taxable income towards all of your other income. I mentioned if you get a social security cost of living adjustment right now, that that could increase your overall tax situation. Those Roth um, IRA withdrawals do not. It's kind of like money under the table. So it won't increase your overall income. So it won't affect your Part B premiums, which are also based on your overall income. So your Part B premiums, your Part D premiums, your social security taxation, all of that is based on your overall tax level. You're based on your overall um, taxable income. So if you can theoretically get half of your 
income from a tax-free source like a Roth IRA, it can really help you in the long run. So, and you never have to pay tax on that money. If the, the law were to change, we would still think this would be grandfathered in. But another quick point is, we think that the Congress is absolutely unlikely to ever get rid of the Roth IRAs. And the reason is um, they want the tax money up front. And so if they were to, that's what the Roth IRA does. When you um, pay taxes now on the conversion or on the contributions, you're paying taxes right now. And it's not necessarily good long-term planning for the, the country and for you know balanced budgets, but it produces more upfront uh, tax revenue. So we think it's not gonna go away.